So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we have an exciting presentation planned answering your questions about managing diabetes during self-isolation and physical distancing. My name is Veronica and I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. And my and name is Dr. Michael Saren. I'm your diabetes educator and your physician for the diabetes exercise program. Great. And today's objective is simple. We will be answering common questions about living with diabetes during COVID-19. So you will also have, your, um, have the opportunity to ask your questions as well. So we'll start with some ground rules. If you have watched the previous webinars, you are aware that we have ground rules. The ground rules include that this session is for education only. We encourage you to connect with your own healthcare provider for specific advice about your situation. The presentation should last around 20 minutes, leaving 20 minutes to answer your questions at the end. Um, we actually may try to facilitate the questions, your questions throughout our presentation, depending on how many questions we will get. If you would like more specific answers for your situation, we would ask you to please follow up with your healthcare provider. If we don't have enough time to answer all your questions today, we encourage you to link back to our website, cardiaccollege.ca, and we'll have answers to all of the submitted questions, and they should be posted there, um, hopefully within 48 hours of today's webinar. As you know, we're using Zoom to conduct this meeting. And to uh, just to orient you, if you don't know already, if you hover your mouse over the lower part of your screen, you will see a box that says Q&A. This is where we will ask you to write your questions for us. So once you open the Q&A icon, you'll see this box that's presented here on the screen right now. And that's where you, uh, we invite you to write your questions. And I have um, populated a few answers to some of the common questions we have received from our patients over the past few weeks. Uh, so we can start to share with you uh, um, these questions. And like I said, if you have other questions, please, please feel free to use the Q&A icon. So the first question I have received uh, is, uh, staying at home all day has me craving carbohydrates. What can I do? And this is probably the most common challenge my patients are talking to me about. They're craving and eating carbohydrate foods. And some patients have expressed guilt after eating these types of foods, which perhaps nudges them to restrict eating in their next meals, uh, only to binge on more carbohydrates later in the day. So if this is you too, know that it is completely normal. Right now is a ridiculously stressful time, and a lot of my patients are feeling worried. They may be experiencing grief, uh, job losses, loneliness. So do not beat yourself up over this. It's perfectly normal reaction to the situation. So why do we crave carbs when we're stressed or anxious? Well, we are, we are biologically wired to find eating pleasurable right now and we need to feel better. So eating helps us feel better. The other reason we uh, the other reason is that when we're stressed, we actually release a hormone called cortisol, which increases insulin production. And when this is activated, it could impact the, our food selection and increase our desire for carbohydrate foods. So what can we do? We can uh, understand that it is a stressful time and that eating carbohydrates as a, is a coping strategy. So practice some self-compassion, that it is okay. And um, yeah, it is okay to use this coping strategy, but this shouldn't be the only coping tool in your coping toolbox. So trust yourself to be the best judge about how much comfort food is okay. And I encourage you to think about what else you can do to help you feel better. So are you able to participate in physical activity? or perhaps you just need a break from the news. Maybe you just need to pick up the phone to talk to a friend. Uh, and something else I can't stress enough is to make sure that you do eat enough. Uh, our body needs and deserves nourishment. So please do not use this time to diet or restrict. This would only be putting more stress on the body. So if you are craving carbohydrates, there are carbohydrate rich foods that you can include that will help support our heart health as well as glycemic control. 
And so these could include you know, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, whole grain toast. Um, and then we'd want to try pairing these carbohydrates with healthy proteins and fats to make a balanced, satisfying meal. Well, the next question here is for uh, Dr. Saren. And the question is, how does COVID-19 affect a heart condition? So, um, I will look at the two situations for folks who do not have pre-existing heart disease, depending on the dose of the virus which gets into the system, the virus itself causes damage to the heart muscle. So it leads to heart failure, heart no longer is able to act as a pump, all the blood backs up into the lungs, that's heart failure. In addition, it causes arrhythmias, cardiac arrest, atrial fibrillation, all kinds of arrhythmias, which further complicate the issue. And the lungs, which already may be damaged with pneumonia, and now they get fluid back up, it's almost like a drowning situation, and it becomes harder and harder for the oxygen to go through. And that's what you hear about people ending up on a ventilator. Whereas in people with pre-existing heart disease, we have the next slide. Uh, yep, sorry. Marika. In people with pre-existing heart disease, such as they may have had a bypass, or they might have stents, or they have high blood pressure, they may have heart valve issues, have had a TAVI surgery, in those situations, the heart failure results from increased demand, which is placed on the heart and the body's already decreased capacity. So that further complicates the issue. That's another reason in that situation for people to go into heart failure. So next slide, Veronica. Staying healthy, as Veronica alluded to, is very critical in this stressful period. And as she also mentioned, we have the release of specific hormones which increase appetite and put an extra burden on the system. So taking care of oneself, apart from practicing hygiene to maintain an exercise routine, very critical even when you are locked in. And we can talk about how can you exercise while you're locked in indoors what do we mean by exercise? Maybe we can answer those questions which you might have. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mike. So I still don't see any questions in, from the audience, so we'll continue on. Another question that I've received is uh, my blood sugar is higher than normal because I'm hungry and I'm eating all of the time. What can I do? So having unlimited access to food in our home is something that many people are not used to and it's easy to eat when we are stressed or bored or just because our fridge is around the corner. So my question to you is what type of hunger are you experiencing? There are many different types of hunger, but we'll go over three today. One is called stomach hunger, another mouth hunger, and another heart hunger. So stomach hunger is the type of hunger we're aware of. It's described as the physical or medical necessity to eat. And this is when you hear your stomach growling. It's asking for nourishment. Now mouth hunger is a craving related to the senses. So if you've eaten a meal or snack recently, but you still feel the desire to eat, maybe take the time to explore what exactly you're craving. Is it a particular food? Or is it something sweet, savory? Maybe it's something cold or warm. Once you have identified what you're craving, we encourage you to eat a reasonable portion of it and savor each bite in order for that type of hunger to dissipate. And then there's also heart hunger, which is described as an emotional trigger or learned behavior. So again, if you've recently eaten, but you find yourself back in the kitchen, slow down and ask yourself what you're feeling. So as I said before, it's normal to eat when we're sad or stressed. However, food only temporarily blunts this emotion you're experiencing, um, only for that emotion to reappear later. So maybe it's uh, 
you should take that time to look into your toolbox for those other stress management activities that could help you soothe and nurture yourself without food. And slowing down and practicing mindful eating allows us to assess which type of hunger we're experiencing. So we encourage you to chew your food well, uh, eat distraction free, and that will help you become more aware of, of how you're feeling. If it isn't true stomach hunger, maybe you need to pick up the phone and chat with a friend to satisfy the heart hunger, or perhaps it's just to drink a warm cup of tea to satisfy the mouth hunger. So we encourage you to explore that a little further. Now I have a question from the audience, Mike. Yeah. Um, it says, I have a patient whose blood pressure is high when, her, when his blood sugar is low and vice versa. Why is this? Go to the next slide. Sorry. Yep. That's a slide we are addressing to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So this is a question from the audience, Dr. Okay. Sam. So I'm just going to read it out loud here for you. Okay. I have a patient whose blood pressure is high when his blood sugar is low and vice versa. Why is this? Yeah. So the individual effects of the virus on blood pressure and diabetes are different in a way. We learned a lot, could I have the next slide? In February this year, the causes of death in 1,023 cases out of 44,672 COVID-19 cases in Wuhan were analyzed and they looked at the cause of death in those people. The maximum, the mortality rate, the death rate was highest in people with pre-existing cardiovascular disease at 10.5%. Diabetes was next 7.3%. Chronic lung disease such as COPD 6.3%, 6 percent in those with high blood pressure, and 5.6% with cancer. The data also showed that there was an age-related trend Oops. that in patients aged 80 years or older, death rate was 14.8%, and in those aged 70 to 79, it was 8%, while there were no fatal cases reported in patients aged nine years or younger. So people who are at highest risk must follow the service of public health professionals, the advice, staying home. Important to remember the major spread happens when people are exposed to carriers of the virus who have no symptoms. Getting close to them, shaking hands, hugging, that's why the distance is, becomes critical and of course the appropriate use of the masks. Next slide, Veronica. Next slide, Veronica. So important to follow all those uh, precautions. And as I mentioned, beware of symptomless carriers. These people have no symptoms and they are out there, they are the, spreading the disease. I also want to mention to make sure your medications are well stocked. We don't know how long it's going to be, but the pharmacies deliver medications only for one month in most regions. So stay connected with your pharmacy. Don't run out of medications. Thank you, Veronica. Great, thanks. And Mike, there's two questions. Um, just asking for a little bit more specific uh, about why um, are people living with diabetes at higher risk? Okay, so people with diabetes, remember if your diabetes is under poor control, the blood sugar itself in the blood vessel causes a tremendous inflammation in the lining of the arteries. Now, if there is inflammation already with high blood sugar, the virus additionally causes further deterioration of the inflammation, either blocking the arteries that way or causing heart failure. Great, thank you. And um, another question was, would this be both type one and type two diabetes? Yes, both, both of course, both. Great, thank you. 
And another comment was, I missed some of the last slides, um, but this respondent is suggesting that um, there are a lot of complications. So there are a lot of um, things they are dealing with right now. So um, their aortic valve was replaced with a pig valve. They also have mild um, AFib. They mm -hmm. did have heart fa failure two years ago, but mm -hmm. having said all that, they're in good health and they walk or they walk for an hour a day and do some resistance training and they also eat healthy. So it's fabulous. And they said, thank you to the cardiac rehab team that has helped as well. Um, so they're just asking now, am I more susceptible to the virus with all these medical problems? Stay protected, stay indoors, keep away from those healthy carriers which are symptomless. That's the key. Protect yourself. Great. Thank you. And then there's another question here uh, that says, I've lost my job and my finances aren't great. What do you suggest for budget-friendly options? Also keeping my blood sugar in check. So I think this is related to food. Yeah. And um, we do still want to try to use that healthy plate. So a quarter, trying to aim for a quarter of our plate to be whole grains, the other quarter as uh, protein, and then half of our plate as vegetables. Uh, lower cost foods would be um, specifically for proteins, I would say more plant proteins. Now these are both great for uh, heart health as well as uh, individuals living with diabetes. So plant proteins, your legumes, black beans, kidney beans, and they're actually cheapest when they're bought or when they're bought uh, dried, and then you can cook them yourself at home. I usually do a big batch, and then I divide it up, and I can freeze the ones that I've already um, made, so it's easy to add to things. Um, so I would suggest more plant proteins as well as trying the frozen vegetables. So frozen or canned vegetables can be actually great options. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're choosing the lower sodium canned options. And um, again, looking for sales if you can. Not sure how much sales are going on right now, but if you do see a good sale, trying to, to um, capitalize on that. So I hope that helps. Again, soups, uh, chilies, stews, that type of thing can really um, make all the food go a, a good distance. And then um, it can also you know, follow, follow that plate guideline that we're talking about, whole grains, um, protein, mainly from plants, and um, as much vegetables as you can. So I hope that helps. Okay, so question for me. Uh, is so I'll, I'll go back to the presentation now that we've had prepared so this is a question that i've received from patients the last couple of weeks and it states uh, i'm frequently skipping or delaying meal times resulting in hypoglycemia so what can i do and uh, many of my patients are finding themselves in unusual eating schedules so just being at home and you know, being at home provides little structure, which may result in overeating for some people, but it could also mean skipping or delaying meals for others. So if you are on blood sugar, blood sugar lowering medications, it's best to actually avoid skipping meals as this can result in hypoglycemia. So what can you do? So uh, we know that diabetes likes routine. If we can eat three reasonable balanced meals a day, it will help our blood sugar to stay in target. But if you are finding this overwhelming, uh, I encourage you to start small. So just start with breakfast and, and think about how you can remember to eat breakfast. I know some of my patients have found success by maybe setting an alarm as a reminder. So think what would help you. And then once you've conquered breakfast, then trying to remember to eat lunch. Starting the day off in a routine may help you make more rational decisions later on for, let's say, your dinner and your snacks. Um, and remember, what you did before COVID-19 may not work now. So it's best to make a new routine for this new situation. Um, you know, build in breaks throughout the day and make a new schedule for yourself. So ask yourself, what do you want your day to look like? And when do you plan to eat? So try to, I hope, 
uh, try to make that new schedule for yourself. Okay. Um, so I have a question here for you, Mike. Mm -hmm. If you carefully social distance and are a cardiac rehab patient, is it not important to take a daily walk? Yes. Now, uh, walk becomes difficult because a lot of people can come close to you, unknown to you. So there are a number of strategies people are doing at home. You can do your walking in front of television. I'm going to mention a link to you, which is One Mile Walk with Leslie Sansoni. L-E-S-L-I-E, -E, Leslie Sansoni, S-A-N-S-O-N-E, One Mile Walk with Leslie Sansoni, YouTube. She walks in front of her television, does a one mile walk. She also has a video on three mile walk. So walking is nothing but you're carrying your own weight. So that's what you can do right at home. Now don't forget, in addition to that, you need to do your resistance training. You have the resistance training uh, videos and the pictures on the cardiac college. You can ideally locked in the house, sit in front of your television and do your resistance training sitting on a chair. So those are the two good ways to exercise and people living with diabetes, particularly 20 or 30 minutes after eating. If you can do that, you will notice that your blood sugar will hardly rise. So you are taking in your carbs and you are spending them. Great, thank you. Okay, so there's also a question here about uh, grocery shopping. Now I have a couple slides coming up about that, so I'm just gonna hold yeah. off on that question. Yes. But um, maybe Mike, you can answer this prepared mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you are no longer able, going to be able to go to the lab for your A1C. Your last A1C must have been three months ago. And now you're wondering what your A1C is. This is when self-monitoring of blood glucose becomes critical. It's critical generally in stressful situations. If you're using fingerprint, met fingerprint method for testing, Remember, targets for keeping your A1C less than 7% are well established. The fasting blood sugar should be between four and seven millimoles per liter, and the blood sugar two hours after eating, five to 10 millimoles. And if your A1C was higher previously, let's say 7.8 or 8.5, then you should try to keep two hours after eating your blood sugar between five to nine. Those are according to the Diabetes Canada guidelines. I also mentioned, want to mention that those living with pre-diabetes, which is A1C of six to 6.4 percent, the target range for blood sugar is between four to 7.5 all the time. And that will translate into an A1C between six to 6.4 percent. These are stressful periods. We are watching if there is an increased tendency for pre-diabetes to become diabetes. There will be a lot of literature coming to that effect. And those using Freestyle Libra have the advantage of frequent and really close monitoring of their blood sugar and paying attention to the effect of food intake and your exercise routine, which you may have already adopted or are planning to adopt, such as one mile walk and your resistance training. Great, thank you. So we'll go on. Another question that I've received is, uh, can I take a supplement instead of eating uh, fresh vegetables? So the short answer is no. Uh, there is no supplement that can actually replace fresh vegetables. So 
supplements can't replicate all the nutrients that vegetables offer, like our vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, or phytochemicals. So, uh, nor will they offer the fiber that's found in the whole foods like vegetables and fruit. So I know these days a lot of people aren't getting out to the grocery, uh, out getting out to grocery shop as often as maybe we once did, uh, which may mean that our fridges aren't full of fresh produce as we're used to. And just know that's okay. Um, as I said before, there are alternatives that we can look to, such as those frozen vegetables and fruit, uh, because they are an excellent substitute and they, they can be just as nutritious as fresh. And they can be convenient too. A lot of the time they're already pre-washed and, and chopped for us. Now canned vegetables can also be a healthy alternative, but we just wanna remember when we're choosing canned or even frozen vegetables and fruit, we wanna choose ones without um, added sodium, um, added sugars, added seasonings, or rich sauces. And as I mentioned before too, we do want to encourage trying to get half of our lunch and our dinner plates as vegetables, even during this self-isolation. So, so if you can now, just think about how you'll be able to execute this in, in the coming weeks. And here is the question about groceries. Um, a lot of patients are, are saying that they don't want to leave the house to buy their groceries, which is totally understandable, and asking what they can do. Now, I don't know if you've watched our webinar that we had last Wednesday, but this webinar was titled Eating Well for a Healthy Immune System. And I do encourage you to watch this webinar. It's saved on cardiaccollege.ca. And it, um, one of our dietitian colleagues, um, Samantha, she spoke to this in detail. But I did highlight a couple things here just to review so that it would be helpful. Uh, current research does show that there's no evidence uh, that COVID-19 spreads through food and there is low risk of catching COVID-19 from touching food packages uh, that have been exposed to the coronavirus. But, um, you know, to minimize this risk even further, we do want to practice hand washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And this should be done after touching food packages um, and obviously before preparing or eating our food. Uh, now they're saying that, you know, the virus could, I guess, theoretically live on the packaging surfaces for hours or up to or a few days. Um, if someone infected with the COVID-19 were to sneeze or cough on it, um, but the virus actually lives for a shorter period of time on porous surfaces, such as food. So that's why they've uh, deemed this as a very relatively low risk of, um, of getting or spreading the the COVID-19. Uh, so it's always recommended to still, you know, take precautions to minimize your risk. And the absolute best way to do this is to wash your hands. Wash your hands well and wash it for, like I said before, at least 20 seconds. And then another tip um, is to actually, you can order your groceries, you know, um, over the internet, or you can ask or order it um, in takeout delivery. Just, if you are doing that, I do suggest that you ask for the food to be dropped off at your doorstep. And, um, you know, it's also important to remove and discard any of the food packaging. And then again, to be sure to wash your hands immediately after touching or handling any food packaging and especially before eating. Now, I've, I've listed some grocery store delivery options here. Uh, unfortunately, some do have wait times now of five to seven days. Uh, but there is uh, a list, so I encourage you to try to check them out um, and see if any of them would be good options for you. So I do hope that helps. And just going back to the questions. So a question for Dr. Siren. It says, what if you're a runner? Good question. You Again, if you're going to run, make sure that there's nobody around. I tried to go to the other day to um, the beaches and the beaches were crowded. The boardwalk was crowded. People were running and uh, running, you are people who are coughing or anything, you can catch the virus in the aerosol. So it's a good way if you're going to run to wear a bandana. Uh, cover your face, 
you can buy bandana from a dollar store or make your own at home and uh, so particularly good for runners if you're going to run great thanks mike uh, so that's all of our prepared questions that we had is if there's any other questions if you could put them in the question and answer box now I guess there's that one remaining question that I'm not sure if we answered uh, well. So maybe I'll just ask again, Dr. Saren, if mm -hmm. a patient's blood pressure is high um, when their blood sugar is low and vice versa. So their blood sugar is high when their blood pressure is low. Can you explain yeah. what that could be? Yes. So I'm presuming that the person is taking their blood sugar and blood pressure at the same time. When the blood sugar is low, the response to low blood sugar is there is a stress hormone called adrenaline, which is released, and that adrenaline can raise the blood pressure. So that might be the explanation there. Um, they are both independent in generally, though. If you are taking your medication, they might be interacting with your level of activity, and, and the blood pressure will be different depending on how active you are in the house or if you are mostly sedentary, then your blood pressure would be low in general. So it may not be in relation to the blood pressure, it may be an independent effect of your level of activity. Great, thank you, Dr. Saren. Okay. And we had another question here, and the question is, is it best to wear a mask when grocery shopping? And uh, I do believe that in light of the new data that has recently been released, um, they are suggesting that people wear a cloth face covering to cover their nose and mouth when they're in a community setting. So that would include grocery shopping, and that's um, from the CDC. So I, I would say to, to try to cover your face when you are grocery shopping because you would be around um, individuals during that time. And that's just a, a new update um, within the last couple of days. And it also keeps other people away when they see you wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good point. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for our questions. I'll just give five more seconds. If anyone has any other burning questions, feel free to type them in. Thank you all for attending. Yes, thank you. So I have another poll question. Oh, this is a, a quote, Dr. Saren. Did you want to speak to that? Yeah, just something to humor you that hard times are like a washing machine. They twist, turn, and knock us around, but in the end, we come out cleaner, brighter, and better. And I'll just do a little plug for tomorrow's session uh, is again at 1 p.m., and it's going to be about label reading. Uh, so tips about eating well, using packaged, canned, and frozen foods, and that's with our dietitian from the Toronto Western site, uh, Samantha. So uh, please join then. And again, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you.